We are living in a time of rapid digital change, where the only limits are the scale of our ideas and degree of our dedication. The technology ideas of today will be the intuitive habits of tomorrow. Never before has innovation promised so much, touching so many in so many different ways. Our frontier is financial technology. It's changing the way we work, make money, and the way we trust each other. To succeed, we need to adopt the mindset of the Silicon Hubs of the world and create an incubator of free thinkers, thought leaders, innovators born of collaborative spirit, all fueled by a belief that technology will enhance our customers' financial lives. To imagine a future beyond what we already know, creating a team with the power to transform the world's leading financial enterprise. We are technology. Thank you, Tarek. And good morning, everybody. It gives me immense pleasure to be able to be here with you today, particularly on International Women's Day. I've been at HSBC now for a couple of years, and I have the honor and privilege of leading an awesome IT team that's at the center of an amazing transformation happening in our organization. I'm gonna talk about uh, our commitment to cloud, and I'm gonna talk about how we're collaborating and partnering with Google to make HSBC a simpler, better, and faster organization. An organization focused on amazing customer experiences through new digital channels, and a company committed to using the latest technology in data analytics and machine learning to transform the way we run our business. Now, I'm sure many of you in the audience are travelers, and I'm sure many of you have stood in airport walkways and seen the HSBC advertisements, and they're quite distinctive. And you've probably asked the question, who are these people? Well, who are we? We're the world's largest international bank. Uh, as Tarek said, we've been around for 150 years. Uh, we're present in 70 countries. We have 37 million customers, customers ranging from individuals to small businesses, mid-sized corporates, large global companies, as well as, um, as, as, as uh, governments as well. So we have a huge business, a huge global business. We're the number one bank in the world for trade finance and cross-border financing, and we're a significant player in the global foreign exchange markets. So given our central position in global finance, as you can imagine, we are a systemically important financial institution, heavily regulated. Now in the banking business, clearly trust and confidence is a central part of our business. We have to make sure that our customers feel confident and trust in us to be the custodians of their assets. So um, you know, information security, reliability, uh, and resilience in how we deliver our services are fundamental. Uh, to our business. Now, apart from having the $2.4 trillion uh, of assets on the balance sheet, uh, we also have at the core of the company a massive asset in our data. And you know, what's been happening in the last uh, two or three years is a massive growth in the, in the size of our data assets. So as you can see here, um, 56 petabytes of data in 2014, that's actually doubled as of now sitting here in 2017, over 100 petabytes of data. And what's happening is our customers are adopting our digital channels more aggressively. Um, we're collecting much more data about how our customers are interacting with us. And obviously embedded in this data is massive insight. And what we need to do as a bank is work with partners to enable us to understand what's happening with this data, draw out the insights so we can run a better business and create some amazing customer experiences. Now our journey in data is uh, very similar to um, other companies. Um, this, is no, this is no different to many enterprise uh, companies, the history here. We have lots of good old-fashioned databases. A lot of our core systems uh, are running on product systems that have been around for 20, 30, even 40 years. The systems are robust and they're scalable and they do a great job, but they don't uh, have the database structures that actually allow us to really do the, uh, the, the data analytics, the machine learning that we need to do. So the history of, of enterprises like mine is that we typically did extracts into traditional data warehousing platforms, uh, which worked well for many years, but uh, of recent times have become expensive to run and difficult to use. So we took the plunge uh, about three years ago to really 
embed ourselves into the evolving Hadoop ecosystem. And for an organization like mine that has this traditional history of uh, what we call legacy platforms, um, it's, been a tough, it's been a tough road for us. Um, all of this has been done on-prem. We've had to provision large infrastructure, physical infrastructure, build out data centers, and hire talented new people that have understanding of these new technologies. So we, we thought about this very carefully in the last year, and we said to ourselves, well, really, we're a bank. At the core of our business, we're a bank, but we also have a significant technology company embedded within the organization. And the question that I was asking the management team is, you know, do we really want to compete with the cloud providers and people like Google? Are we really going to try and do what they do as well as they do it? And I think our conclusion was that it was better for our business if we adopt a cloud-first strategy. So we started working with Google uh, about six months ago now, so it's still early in our, in our relationship. Uh, but we've been working with them on some of the most important and critical business problems that we have to solve in our business. I'll give you an idea of what these types of problems are. So the initial use cases here are typically characterized by uh, business problems that have very large data sets and require very intense computing capability in short bursts. Now, the first one on this list is all about um, anti-money laundering. So it's one of our obligations of being a bank. We work with the, um, with the governments and the crime agencies to identify um, nefarious activity uh, and money laundering, criminal activity. Now, we have um, a set of applications that monitor um, a huge time series of data. So a massive data set, billions of transactions for all of our customers. And we're running analytics over this huge data set with great um, you know, compute uh, capability to identify patterns in the data and to bring out um, what looks like nefarious activity within our customer base. And those patterns that we identify then escalated into the agency. So we work with them to track down the bad guys. So this is an application that is clearly requires massive data sets, great um, uh, computing capability, but also a machine learning capability to be able to identify the patterns in this huge, uh, this huge data set. The other applications that are mentioned here in terms of finance and risk, we have billions of transactions. Those transactions need to be aggregated so we can manage our finances and our risk uh, at a global level. Evaluation services in our trading business, as I said, we're a major player in global uh, financial markets. We need to be able to run complex Monte Carlo simulations on a regular basis to be able to better understand our trading positions and our risks. So this requires a significant compute capability. So we were faced with the question of do we build out a new data center and put you know, thousands of servers and thousands of cores out there to do this activity, or should we actually work well with somebody who does it as a core business? And our conclusion was rather than build it out ourselves, we should be working with you know, world-class leaders in this space, and hence our um, our work with Google. This, now, all of this doesn't happen uh, by accident, uh, and there are some critical enablers that have to all be in place to make this work for organizations like us. Um, the first couple of boxes here talk about risk and compliance and information security. You know, we are a heavily regulated business. We have to provide very resilient, very safe, and, and very performant um, services to our customers, and also very agile because the requirements of our customers are changing. Uh, tremendously quickly. Um, we also have to respect the data protection and data residency rules that we have in our 70 countries. There are lots of rules about what data can sit where and what data can be shared. So we have to respect all of that, and we're working closely with, uh, with our partner at Google on this, on, this, uh, on this construct. Information security, as you heard already this morning, um, it's a massive issue for everyone, particularly for a bank. We have to keep our data safe uh, from the cyber criminals. Um, and we're working very well with Google on solutions in the security space. Probably the biggest impact, though, or the biggest enabler for this journey is the other two boxes in the middle here. You have to drive a cultural shift in your business to make this really work. You have to adopt an agile methodology. You have to adopt a DevOps mindset. Um, and you need to be able to re recruit and retain talented people that understand how to use these new technologies and work in this way. So just uh, a point of note, we are recruiting, OK. And we're a great company, just like Google. Um, so the other issue here on the second box here is about integration. I mentioned the legacy platforms we have. All of our core data is sitting in these systems of record. We have to make sure that we can integrate all of this technology complexity 
to work with the Google platform, the Google Cloud platform. So this integration layer is very, very important. You've got to get that culture in place. You have to get the people that understand how to do it. And you have to build the integration layers to be able to make it all work in that rapid cycle. And lastly, of course, data preparation. You know, we have, uh, like most big enterprises, a data sprawl, as I said, and a, and a massive growth of data. But also, you need to invest your time and effort in your data architecture and making sure you understand where your crown jewels are, where the copies are, and get uh, a really good understanding of the preparation of getting the data ready to be able to interface effectively into, uh, into the cloud partner. Um, and obviously, agreements of legal and commercial uh, are obviously very important as well. So in summary, these enablers are fundamental to us achieving our goals at HSBC. Um, and we're working in a very collaborative and partnership um, mode with, with Google to get these, uh, these enablers in place to run a better business. Thank you, Daryl. Uh, it's a fascinating journey that, uh, that, that you guys are on there at, uh, at HSBC. Just a, a couple of uh, questions for you. The, you'd mentioned that you did a pretty thorough um, investigation of the technologies, and particularly as you were looking at us around data flow and BigQuery. What, what aspects convinced you to move forward with GCP? Yeah, we've uh, we spent a good amount of time working with all the big cloud providers and evaluating their products. I think if you look at the, uh, the scarce talent we have on data uh, analysts and, and data scientists, they need tools that allow them to do their work in a very productive way. So they've, we've found as we've worked with your team and your, your subject matter experts working with our data scientists that your suite of products have been very performant, very easy to use. Um, you know, there's always a challenge of getting data scientists to shift from their favorite platform to a new one. And I think the way that um, your products are actually being configured and presented to our scientists, they've, they've really enjoyed that experience. So, uh, you know, it's early in our relationship. Uh, we're still in pilot mode, and we hope to get these, these use cases to production in the coming weeks and months. But I think um, our experience so far has been very positive. Terrific. Uh, what is, is, just looking forward the next three to five years, how do you see the cloud really playing out and all these technologies impacting your business? Yeah, look, it's very difficult to be able to predict the future even three years ahead. It's a long way away, right? So the world's going to change. I think what's definitely going to be a consistent is that our data is going to continue to grow. Uh, massive data sets need to be, uh, need to be managed. Um, we know also we're going to be pushed to go faster. I mean, our customer base is dragging us into a new world and consuming you know, services on new digital channels, which require us to be agile and fast to market. Um, we know we're going to have the need to uh, use data analytics and particularly machine learning to run a better business. So um, it's going to get bigger, it's going to get more complex, and we're going to need to partner with people like Google and others to be able to use the best technology in the world to solve these problems for our business. Great. Well, if, finally, I think everyone in the audience, I'm sure, could use a little advice. You guys are leaning very forward into the cloud and cloud technology. What advice would you give everyone here for how to really start their journey? Yeah. Well, I think the first thing you need to do is you have to make the jump in thinking to make yourself a cloud-first company. Um, it requires uh, you know, getting everybody on board in, in, the, in the technology team, but also the business, to get the business to think about things in a very different way. And I mentioned the criticality of new ways of working with agile methods, DevOps methods is really important. So that first thing is make that jump uh, and be bold and have courage to go and do the innovative things. Um, second thing is pick a partner that has the same type of culture as you. I think you need to, if you're going to be innovative, if you're going to be bold and take on big challenges, you need a partner that's going to think the same way and work in the same uh, ways of working. Um, and just, I think, basically, the conclusion I've, I've come to is um, have a good look out there, meet uh, you know, the, the people in the market, because they're all very different. Um, and certainly, from my perspective, the chemistry between the people and the teams is actually the number one, the number one thing, because what we're doing is, is complex. What we're doing is difficult in many cases. And the chemistry and the culture of the organizations is very important. And that's and it's a multi-year journey. And it's a multi-year journey. So you have, to, you have to like how you're hanging out with you know, <laughs> for, the, for the years ahead. <laughs> exactly. Well, again, on behalf of all of Google Cloud, we're really thrilled that you're here today. So thank Great. you very much.